everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating a pop-up book card using this pop-up shadow box book die set that we brought out last year. It's an older set, but it's a really fun one to decorate the outside and inside of your cards. I did go ahead and pre-make the book because I do have three or four video tutorials showing how to construct the book, and this video is already quite long with the coloring included. I'm also going to pull in the new A7 Aloha cover plate. I cut it twice from light green, twice from white cardstock, heavyweight white, and twice from a darker green cardstock. I also went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut my uh, Tropical Bird stamps. I am going to show you the coloring, but here you can see I did use every image apart from that flamingo on the top right. And then the last product I pull in is this zigzag stencil. So here are all of the Copic markers that I used if you want to pause the video and color along with me. Um, I'm going to show you the majority of the coloring. I will show you the entire cockatoo image that includes some leaves on his branch. So I won't show you any other leaf coloring because I use the same markers that I did on this image. I do also have the caps on screen. I try my best to keep doing that. The way that I like to color is from darkest to lightest. And I do that because I have a tendency to overblend if I go from lightest to darkest. So by starting with my contrasting color, I end up with more shadows and also more highlights because you can see as I color, I do leave white space on the paper showing through. And that is the area I go over with my lightest marker. So I get a brighter highlight. And for me, I just like the results more. Uh, but there's a ton of different ways to color with Copics. I am definitely not a professional. I actually prefer to do die cut cards, but this stamp set was really fun to color because there are um, shading indicator lines on the images. So if you're not a colorist, but you enjoy it, you don't know how to add your shading, this set's really great because um, the shading lines are drawn out for you and you just follow them. So the stamped birds in this set and the leaves are also the die cuts from the new tropical bliss collection so everything coordinates some of the pattern paper has some of the images as well and i will have all of the products that i used linked down below and i do want to mention that i stamped every image from the set out with Versafine Onyx Black ink and I clear heat embossed the images and that is because I'm using alcohol markers. Versafine is not an alcohol friendly ink but you can use it if you clear heat set it and I personally just love the crisp black outline that I get with that uh, ink so that's what I opted to do here. So this is actually the second time I'm doing a voiceover for this card. You might have seen it last night, um, but I pretty quickly took it down because I realized that the voiceover did not match with the video. I think I was like two minutes ahead or two minutes behind. I don't remember, but this is attempt number two. This was supposed to go up on Thursday, so I'm going to have the winners announced in my next video that I have already filmed. I just have to edit it so it's probably going to go up either Saturday or Sunday and I will have the winners of the $50 gift cards and the kit. And this card that I made is for an Instagram hop that we had on Wednesday. So if you guys want to participate in that I'm going to give away two $25 gift cards to Scrappy Tails and there's tons of beautiful inspiration by the Scrappy Tales design team. There is even like projects, not necessarily cards. Um, two of the team members made home decor pieces and like table settings. So I would definitely check it out. I'll have a link to my Instagram where you can start the hop and you have until next Friday to leave a comment to enter to win. So I still have a lot of time coloring here. I wanted to include it because in my 10 card one kit video, I wasn't able to include it. And I use the exact same markers for that video, by the way. And the stamp set is so beautiful. I just wanted to showcase the coloring. 
And so I guess while I color, I will talk a little bit about my life and the updates that I have. I did move. I live closer to Orlando and I really like the area. It's nice and wooded. So I lived on the coast of Florida, which I did really like, but I wanted something, I guess, like more woodsy, more country. And I wanted to not have a house with an HOA. So I opted to move a little bit more to like central Florida, but I still live about 30 minutes from the beach. So I love the area that I chose. I live right by some beautiful springs and uh, like little walk areas. So, and it's quieter. It's a really cute little town. So I also purchased two new Siamese kittens. So I am definitely moving towards the title of crazy crafty lady, which is fine with me. I have the room for them and I always wanted to have two from the same litter because if you have Siamese, you know, you know, Siamese twins, they are very bonded with their litter mates and they also have a tough time bonding with cats later on as adults. They are usually either um, you buy them as a pair or you buy them as a single and you don't really bring in any other cats. Now, Felix bonded with my mom's cat who's a bangle. So it's definitely possible to introduce new cats when they're older, but generally with Siamese, they are kind of a type A personality. Um, and I wanted to have two so that they have each other in case I left for like a day or two. And because I'm the only one living at this house, I'm a single person, I didn't want a single cat to get so attached to me and then be really disappointed if I were to bring in another cat later on. So by having two from the start, I think that was a good choice. But I did name them Maverick and Charlie from Top Gun. Honestly, I haven't even seen the new movie yet. And I didn't really like the old movies, but I really like the names. I was debating between Forrest and Jenny, Amber and Johnny, um, Pamela and Tommy, Pippin and Mary. I had like a whole list and on Instagram I did a poll. And Maverick and Charlie won, I think because of the new movie. But I think the names are super cute. I wanted them to match. I know some people are going to ask about Felix, so I only live about an hour and a half away from my parents, and I go there at least once or twice a week um, because currently I'm still packing orders there. So I see him all the time, and he actually bonded with my dad while I was living with them and with that bangle that I mentioned. So it just made more sense for him to stay with my parents. He's also still a young cat. He's about two and a half years old. So I didn't want to put him through any more stress of moving again because he's moved like four times since we got him. We moved to an apartment and then a house and then my parents' house. And then if I were to bring him here, it would have been four times. And he just got settled in with my parents. There's a huge porch that they have. He loves going outside on it. So... Um, I figured I would get the two little Siamese kittens and my parents would take care of Felix and I would see him very often. So I think everything worked out for the best and um, my craft room. So I am all moved in. The craft room is about 95% done. I converted my dining room into my craft room because it was a much bigger space than the room I was going to put it in. And I was able to buy a whole new Ikea shelf and like an extension on my table. So all I really have to do is decorate that extra shelf, like the extra storage that I bought, and then I'll be ready to go. So um, I will have a craft room tour in the near future. And I have another video with the Tropical Bliss collection coming out soon. And I'm also now working on the fall and Halloween. So that's about halfway done and it has like a farm theme for the fall side of it and then a general Halloween theme so I'm really excited for that and it's going to be another large collection which I think will come out 
hopefully in early August. So I went ahead and die cut all of my images. You can see on the top left there. And now I'm going to work on my frames. So I wanted to create a two-toned frame using this A7 Aloha leaf cover plate. I love this cover plate. I think it's my favorite. I love the overlapping leaves. This frame is very delicate, so I am adding a heavyweight white layer behind both of them. I have a light green and a dark green frame, and I have another dark green and light green frame over to the side that I'm going to cut apart so that I can make both of these a two-toned leaf frame. Now, if I were to do this again, I think I would opt to not do this step just because those stamped images are so colorful. I don't think you really need to do a two-tone leaf cover plate. I like how it looks on the front, but the inside might be a little bit busy. Either way, it's still really pretty <laughs> if you want to create a regular card with this technique. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the darker green frame and I'm cutting the more solid leaves. So I'm leaving off the fan style leaves and the branchy leaves, and I'm just going for those solid ones. I'll do that with the dark green and the light green. So one of them will have the dark green leaves on top and then the other will have the light green leaves on top. So I'm gonna just show you one of the two frames because I did the exact same thing on the other. And this creates a really pretty look. And there was a design team member, Brenda Noel, who used this cover plate and cut it from like a turquoise blue cardstock and put the new die cut flamingos in the center. And I'm gonna do that in another video because I love the color combo she chose for that. But that's another option if you don't wanna go with like the typical tropical colors. So here I'm just paper piecing those back on top. And I really like the two colors of green. All right, so now I'm going to work on the front cover of my book. I have this zigzag stencil and this is available for purchase, but you might also get it if you spend a certain amount, it's $75. Um, I have a few stencils left. You're either gonna get the zigzag, the chevron, or the Aztec stencil, depending on what's in your order. So if you purchased one of the stencils, I'll make sure that you get a different one that's free. But I really like this design. It's simple and something that you can use quite often. And I am ink blending on black cardstock with Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink. You can blend on dark cardstock with this ink and it's just gonna add a really subtle texture to the background. I do like how that turned out. And the black is really gonna make these green leaves pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue my frame onto that. And then I'm going to pop up my cockatoo image and glue him right in the center. You'll see at the end, I am going to add a sentiment to the front. At first I thought I wanted it on the inside, but I didn't have any room for it, so I will put it on the outside. I'm going to finish off the front with a couple of these white plumerias that come in the Aloha cover plate. There's also uh, some hibiscus flowers that you can add. I went with white to kind of tie in with the white on the stamp stamped image. And then I will add yellow pearls to the center of each of those. And then here you can see I'm placing it onto my book and there is a white border at the top and bottom. So at first I glue it down, it doesn't bother me, but later on I prefer it to be black. So you'll see the final photo, I did add black to the top and bottom. I'm going to finish off the spine with some strips of green cardstock and I will also add a green panel to the back of the card. So 
So out of all the pop-ups we've brought out, the book is definitely the most dimensional. So you would most likely have to mail it in a bubble mailer. I also have a video tutorial where I show how to create your own custom box envelope. I will link it so you can check it out. And here you can see I am adding black strips to cover the shadow box frame just because I really liked the black behind the front cover. So I wanted to pull that in to the inside of the card. I took a piece of the Tropical Bliss 12 by 12 pattern paper, I'm going to add that to the back wall of the shadow box. And then on top, I'm going to add my second cover plate. And that just honestly kind of finishes the entire thing. I don't really have to add anything else other than my stamped images. So this little parrot is popped up on four layers of foam tape. I have foam tape from Uline that is double mounted. So for me, I only had to layer it twice, but it's the equivalent to four layers of 3M. So he has popped up quite a bit. The flamingo I tucked in down there, he is about two rows from the front of the, the shadow box. And then this little parakeet is one row behind the frame. So there's different levels of dimension. I'm attaching the flamingo and the parakeet to the pages of the book. So I'm only adding glue where those areas overlap. Then I have some more of these white plumerias I'm going to add. And here you can see I definitely could have got away with just a solid color for the cover plate but it does add some really cool color on the left side of the inside front cover i have a gold frame that frame is included in the a7 shadow box pop-up die set and then i will tuck in some of my stamped leaves to the top right and bottom left I'm going to keep this one really simple. I kind of wish that I glued this frame on some white cardstock just so that it's easier to write a custom message, but you can write on this pattern paper. It is glossy, so just make sure after you write it to leave the card open until it's fully dry before closing it. So I love the 12 by 12 pattern paper for these larger pop-up cards. This is an A7 size, so the 6x6 six six just really doesn't work for those larger card bases and these larger pop-ups. So I really am loving the 12 by 12 paper. All right, so I'm just gonna glue down my last remaining plumerias to that both of these clusters. And then I'll add my yellow pearls. And then that will pretty much finish the inside of the book. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video tutorial. I have a coordinating blog with some more close-up pictures that I will have linked. And if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to the Scrappy Tales YouTube channel. I am trying very hard to kind of get on a schedule with YouTube so that I don't have to leave while I draw. So I'm going to start going down to one post per week. I will have another one posted this weekend, but after that, um, I will have to continue drawing so I won't be posting as frequently. I did add some more pattern paper to the inside spine and here I'm going to add that green panel to the back. So I hope you all have an amazing Father's Day weekend. Uh, there will be a sale for Scrappy Tails actually starting today because I had to redo this video. So right now the entire shop is 15% off um, excluding the new release. So thank you guys again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.